Tom De Decker takes us through European Legacy Masters. Next on Eternal Doodles. Extreme thank you to all the Dirtomaniacs that support the show. If you want to get ad-free content and extra free content, you can go to patreon.com slash eternal doodles and support us. Proceeds go to editing the show, upgrading equipment, and helping us travel to events. What it do? Hello and welcome to Eternal Dirtles. I'm your host, Zach Clark. And with me this week, we have a special guest, Tom DeDecker, um, one of the uh, committee members for uh, European Legacy Masters. Tom, how are you doing, man? Hey, Zach. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And so happy to talk about European Legacy Masters, our little project we started three years ago. Yeah, we had we had Sahar Mahardi on uh, last year, and she kind of went over a little bit with us. But um, for the layman, for the person who this is their first time hearing about this, can you give a little history, a quick explainer, like, you know, no longer than five minutes, but like a quick, you know, uh, what what is this? What is Legacy? Uh, what is Legacy Masters in Europe? What is it? Eternal Dirtles is proud to be sponsored by Moxfield. Moxfield is the best Magic the Gathering deck building website on the internet. You can create, share, and find decks from Commander to Legacy and even fan-supported formats like Premodern and Old School. You can see all of our decks on our Moxfield. Follow the links below to stay tuned. Yeah, so it's a community-driven uh, invitational tournament that we do once a year alongside Four Seasons Bologna. And um, <clears throat> so players play in their regional qualifier events all year long. And then at the end of the year, uh, there's 128 of them that get to compete with us uh, and battle for a trophy, bragging rights, some money, of course, um, exclusive playmats, a lot of swag. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be great. And now this is awesome. the third year that we're doing it. We had uh, over 7,000 people compete across the continent, across all of our tournaments. Uh, and yeah, on, on September 7th, we are super excited to uh, get on it again and stream so our event when, to the world. Tom, when does the uh, qualifying season begin for this? Obviously, September 7th, we're coming up on, on you know, what, seven days out for this thing? A couple <laughs> days. Yeah, We're recording on, I think, the 30th. This will probably go up on the 3rd. You know, uh, obviously, there's no time to qualify right now. But for next year, uh, how, how, when do the qualifying uh, rounds begin? Well, it's funny how that goes because uh, ELM is on Saturday of Four Seasons. And so on Sunday, there's also the big Legacy main event at Four Seasons. And so that's actually the first event that already will qualify for ELM 2025. So it's literally all all year long. Um, <clears throat> the way that works is we, we've set up a system where all of the countries, they get a number of uh, invites based on the recorded player attendance during the past years. We've got a whole model set up for that. Oh, cool. um, but then next to that, any uh, big events that have 100 or more players in Europe, they can apply to get automatically an additional invite slot because we want these players, the ones that are really winning the big events, of course, to be to be present at the LM and to battle for uh, for glory with with well with all the other ringers we have. So uh, yeah, it starts off, it restarts immediately. There's no no rest period Amazing. in between. <laughs> but one one last point of uh, of personal. Uh, uh, curiosity uh any chance there's any uh any of these events happening between november 30th and uh december 10th when uh when Prague happens when uh eternal uh weekend happens yeah yeah so um four seasons is, a, is the week before eternal weekend europe so for many players that'll be a, an exciting trip to make where you can combine the two greatest events in europe yeah um, and so Four Seasons in itself is, of course, a qualifier just due to a, a, its sheer size. Um, and then next to that, the regional qualifier season has not yet been um, completely mapped out. So that, that will start slowly after, uh, after the next event. Um, but so there, no doubt, well, without a doubt, there will be multiple qualifiers uh, the weekend prior in various yeah. countries, I mean as there always are. I know I'm jumping the gun on this a bit. We let's talk about this year first. The reason why I ask is because I am seriously considering uh, going to Eternal <laughs> Weekend in Prague, and I'm like, I might be there. Might be, might be fun to just like try and queue for one of these things. Um, but that said, let's talk about let's talk about uh, this year. Uh, so uh, let's start with location. Where are you guys having this? Yeah, so uh, we're doing it alongside um, Four Seasons. So that's in Bologna, Italy. Uh, well known for its uh, fantastic weather, fantastic people, and of course the brilliant food 
uh, hashtag mango cuisine. A lot of his best pictures uh, are from there. Uh, the famous Molino restaurant owned by one of the organizers of Four Seasons is also there. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's magic and pasta for many people are the highlights. And uh, yeah, once a year for uh, ELM, of course. Come for brainstorm fetch, stay for the stay for the pasta. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Um, so, so what? So, you, you know, we talked about bragging rights. Obviously, big a big deal. Um, but what what are the what are the prizes like? Yeah. Um, so we have trophies um, for first and second. Um, first one gets uh, five hundred euros worth of store credit. Second one gets uh, four hundred, <clears throat> and then it, it goes down. Uh, top eight gets a one fifty. And then for top 16, there's um, other prizes from our sponsors, uh, Ultimate Guard. And that's like boulders and um, portfolios, also playmats. Top 8 also gets an exclusive playmat made by the Chichi Venkman. She's, uh, yeah, the, the playmat is offered to us by our main sponsor, that's Booza MTG. He's, um, he's the guy behind Damnation and also Popper Fest. Uh, okay. Sorry, Popper Geddon, which you probably heard about. It's like the bigger Popper event in in the world right now. So uh, besides doing that, he's also been sponsoring ELM ever since day one. Um, one of the Belgian TOs is actually also uh, involved as a sponsor. So they're also putting money in. Uh, so, yeah, so it's a mix of <clears throat> product and money. And then we also have actually a special announcement <clears throat> that is about to drop this weekend. So by the time the episode gets out, um, this will be public knowledge. Uh, we also have yeah, a we're painting going up on Monday. for first. Actually, a painting. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. We do, and that's being offered to us by the guys behind the Four Seasons themselves. So they had awesome. a painting commissioned for other um, merch, uh, merchandise, basically. Um, and the original they are offering to the winner of ELM. So even though Wizards kind of shafted us with the Eternal Weekend, ELM will have our players' backs, and there yeah, will be a, an awesome-looking dragon to, uh, yeah, to uh, well, next to the dragon rights. The feature on your on the wall of the winner. Yeah. So this is a obviously this is an invite only event uh, that you have to qualify for. But I'm assuming that uh, you know surrounding this event there are going to be some other some other like satellite events stuff like that happening at at the event itself, right? Like side events and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the way it actually works is ELM is kind of a an invitation only side event of Four Seasons. Four Seasons is of course the bigger event. It's in the same venue, um, which has multiple halls. Kind of a crazy venue if you look at it. It's like this community center. Um, while we are playing magic there, there's also like billiard rooms where uh, the elderly are, are are gathering too. It's a, it's a nice little mix. Um, but so while we are playing uh, ELM uh, in the other room, there's a 400 player modern event going on. Uh, there's the vintage main event, which generally gets about 60 to 70 players in Bologna. Um, and then, yeah, on Sunday, there's, of course, the giant, also 400 player or more legacy main event. Um, and then on Friday, there's trios, also probably the, the most fun event oh. of them all, modern vintage and legacy. I've, uh, I've had nice. the honor of winning one of those, and those are always a, an absolute blast. Yeah, I love, I love a trios event, especially because, like, when you go to these big events, a lot of times you spend a lot of time, like, hunting for your friends in between rounds and stuff like that. And it's nice to just be like, I'm going to be with my bros for, like, you know, for the entire day, you know, like we we'll all eat together. You know, we'll do everything together. Uh, and it, I, I love a trio's event. It's not, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a great way to hang with your friends for like a guaranteed amount of time. Yeah. And for me, it's an extra opportunity to play vintage because despite my heavy involvement in the, in the legacy community, um, my favorite f uh, format is actually vintage. It's just that there's so much less to do. Events are so much smaller. Yes. Yeah. But so uh, I usually when I go to Four Seasons, I tend to jam in uh, a few rounds of vintage on Friday with the trios, and then I play the vintage main event normally on Saturday. But uh, this edition, I'll, I'll of course be working to uh, have the stream, help with the stream and all that stuff for ELM. Now, now these are pretty serious events, obviously, so I, I'm assuming the answer is no. But what is the uh, pro like proxy level? Is it proxy friendly or not proxy friendly at all? So I asked um, mostly for vintage. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. No. So, um, so first of all, Four Seasons and ELM. And so we are ELM are guests at Four Seasons is the way you should see mm -hmm. it. So we kind of yeah. do our own thing, and uh, ELM is uh, allows full proxy. 
Uh, the only requirements okay. we put on the players is that they uh, make them full color and clearly recognizable, just mo ma ma uh, mainly for coverage reasons. And of course, that they, they are yeah. not marked like any you know, normal tech requirements you know, in yeah. a competitive setting. But that's the only thing we ask of players. Um, that's, we also that's hand great. out um, some very neat looking proxy duels, which we, uh, the guys from In Response podcast from Austria have made with yeah. pictures from the, yeah, from various countries made by community members. So those are back. Uh, yeah. So ELM itself is full proxy. Um, and That's we amazing. heavily support the use of proxy because we think it's one of the key drivers uh, behind the legacy scene in Europe really standing up. I mean, we like to think it's also uh, our involvement, but uh, the, pro the proxy movement definitely is a big thing there. Um, now yeah. for four seasons itself, it's a bit differently. So every tournament that involves vintage allows full proxy and that includes trios that's awesome so yeah and that includes all three slots uh, all three spots so they didn't want to do it that the vintage player could use proxies and then the modern player maybe couldn't yeah. so uh trios allows full proxy modern main event legacy main event does not those are competitive events uh and and also sanctioned i believe sanctioned, um, yeah if it's sanctioned <clears throat> it makes sense that they're not proxy obviously. yeah um but the vintage main event does allow proxies again because it's kind of the only way you can still find over 50 people to to actually yeah. play these days you know and also I, I ask because you know if i go bringing power across the pond you know <laughs> that's a that's a it's risky you know like you know you between customs and you know every you know just traveling and stuff you know it, it's nice to be able to be like okay i'll just lean on proxies for this one you know I was actually watching uh, the uh, uh, there was a big CD, CEDH event uh, last week, and they're you know classically known to be very proxy friendly. And I was watching the guys do coverage for it, and it's just like what a task because everyone just has their like fan fun art like of of like every one of the cards that they own. And I'm like, how do these guys know any of the cards that are on the table? Like I I have to assume there's somebody going around the table trying to figure out what all these cards are and you know telling the booth, but like. It, you know, it barely looks like they're playing magic, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, but I, I have appreciate, it with, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I have it with cool. when, when I watch standard coverage these days, too, because there are just so many different <laughs> versions of cards, if of I'm course, being honest. Yeah. Um, that being said, yeah, especially for EDH, that must be an absolute nightmare because there are so many more oh cards to keep so track cards. of. Um, <laughs> yeah. So for us, that's why we, we ask to, to, you know, to, to stick to recognizable versions of cards. Please, uh, yeah. Uh, just to help our coverage team, basically. Um, yeah. It's like uh, my eight cast deck where I choose the weirdest version of every card. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> going to be challenging for our cost as well, but we, we ask our players to kind of keep it tidy yeah. um, for everybody's convenience. Yeah. So uh, I'm assuming you guys have like uh, it probably full by now, but you, you have uh, hotel blocks and stuff like that set up for, for players incoming. Um, well, we ourselves, we don't particularly have anything set up, but in, uh, I mean, Four Seasons is, is there four, four times does. a year. Yeah. Um, and so close to that, there's a couple of hotels that always get overrun with Magic players whenever there's Four Seasons. The one I'm at, always at, is Bellaria. Um, okay. yeah, it's a, quite a nice hotel, it has a swimming pool too, because of course, uh, September in Italy, the weather's, weather's great then. Um, yeah. it's about 15 minute walk, if that much, from the venue. Um, not really in the city center, it's right outside, but yeah, we, we know how to get around. To, it's not our first rodeo of there. Of course. Yeah. And then yeah. there's, yeah, there, there's, I think two other hotels, uh, living place and Una Way, as far as I am aware, that are also over on with magic players whenever there's a four awesome. seasons. And of course, yeah, I ask mostly for, for, you know, for next year. So people can, can plan ahead for, for an event like this. Obviously we'll, we'll be reporting on it as, as the, uh, as the event, uh, is is complete we'll be talking about it a little bit but uh for people that see this episode and are interested in trying to you know qualify for next year and whatnot it's, it's you know, just nice to get the logistics down and stuff like that yeah the, the practical stuff for four seasons in particular um i recommend you follow them on facebook they yeah. they are admittedly not the greatest with keeping all of their social media and website and stuff up to date but their facebook is really the main thing that is always right and a lot of the yeah. stuff is so stable, even if you look at uh, things from the previous edition, the schedule will most likely be the same. Um, the only thing that kind of I changes are... I they're very are... responsive, too, if you, if you want to ask them questions. Oh, they're, they're pretty, absolutely. They're pretty good Follow them on Twitter, you. and if you, anything you ask them directly, uh, Andrea and, and the guys are super helpful. They're also just yeah. a pleasure to work with from the, 
from ELM side. Uh, they're, they've been so generous, oh. uh, just giving us a room and judges to to play our event with. Yeah. So uh, I have to ask because it's it's a week out. You know, um, how do you feel about the ban and restricted announcement? So um, I'm kind of disappointed in multiple ways for for legacy. For the other formats, I think it's it's good. Um, for vintage, I would have been fine either way if they uh, if they done nothing. Um, although for the past few years, I have been playing and really enjoying the Squee deck, uh, so Counter Squee or Vangevine, however you want to call it, yeah. um, and the, especially the combination of Saga plus Vaxing Bubble really murdered that deck. So from that point of view, it's really fun to to see some options there. But Wasteland is still rampant, and that's still the biggest enemy. So I'm not sure there. For Legacy, <clears throat> so here's the weirdest thing. I I usually myself don't enjoy playing like the best deck, and in particular, Days decks is not just not my kind of style. Uh, I like mid range decks and combo decks in general. Yeah. Um, but now for the past almost year and a half, I've been playing Scam, not the Reanimator version, but just the fair version. And I, I really enjoyed that deck, so I'm kind of sad to see Grief go. I know it's not a popular you're, opinion. You're one of the bad guys. <laughs> I, I am. Now, that being said, I, I'm fully um, uh, sympathetic to the people who think the play experience of getting Grief twice in a turn is absolutely miserable, and I get that. Um, but I was of the opinion that it's Reanimate. That's the card that needed to go. I think that's the enabler. Um, I can't argue with you. I can't argue with you there. I was on. I was on either Entomb or Reanimate. One of those two had to go. Uh, yeah, people want to but, keep Reanimator as a deck around, so I think if you want to do that, you have to make a choice of which one to keep. Um, and I, as much as I like Reanimate on on like Snapcaster or Mage or like stupid dorks, that's not yeah. what the majority of people are really no. doing with it. <laughs> and I, 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 yeah. I kind of don't see why people are defending the card in some regard. Because ever since Grizzlebrand, I don't think Reanimator has particularly made like really fun games in Legacy. So yeah, I would have preferred them for them to do that. Um, barring that, I can see why they they did away with grief. Because again, that play pattern is miserable. I get that, and and we, we should yeah. get, we should have gotten rid of that. I just thought we could do it with 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 Reanimate. Um, yeah, and then when with just grief gone, seeing the state of the meta game now, I'm kind of afraid that it's going to be oops all frogs. Until the end of yeah. the year, it seems like it seems like <clears throat> actually, you know, I've been playing online for the past couple of days, and it's been oops on Nadu's in truth, which is kind of worse in my opinion <laughs> than just watching someone take all these tur- like you know take all these game actions like on online. It's like whoa, they're they- gonna have to get rid of that. I think I think you know like we we uh, interviewed uh, uh uh oh man, I forget the name of the podcast now. Uh, we interviewed a few people, and uh, only one person uh, mentioned even mentioned Nadu, and he was extremely adamant about it. Um, and you know, I, I was like, "Oh, okay, you know, that's that's a take." And uh, after like after like playing like two two tournaments, I'm like, "Oh, this is going to be a disaster!" At like, I think that's going to be the deck that takes down Eternal Weekend, or at least is like the most ubiquitous. Um, but we'll find out, I guess. Um, it, it has a bit of an X problem, right? And again, play patterns. It's not that fun to yeah. see it go off. You don't know whether there's actually an end in sight or if they're going for some obscure loop to theoretically yeah. lock up the game. So yeah, that, that's not great. Um, so far, I haven't really been worried about not doing particular. Again, it's mostly Frog Days decks that I've yeah. seen uh, do well. Um, but it's still very early. Uh, we, we, we have to see. Um, I, I played an event last week, and from what I saw in the top eight, I think. Um, well, actually, that was even before the 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 grief ban. So I played li- literally this Sunday before it got banned. Um, but I did see like quite a few decks still doing fine, even in in a meta game that was only half adjusted. Because clearly, some players had already shifted towards a deck that wouldn't have been dead in a, in two days. Um, yeah, I, I saw the Ocelot, uh Things this seems really fun to me, and it's actually surprisingly strong. Um, you know which one I'm talking about, right? With the guides, the ener- also that energy, that engine. Oh yeah, no, I like that. That uh, you know, I I never thought the energy was going to be like a competitive deck until MH3 came out, and I was like, whoa, okay. They started, they started, they pushed this. They started, they started making it worth worth it to play energy cards. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, but it's in particular the cat that copies stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, and it looks very. It's um, kind of like Tamio as well. The cards read. Yeah. Uh, when I first read them, they looked very innocuous, um, but now that I see them in action, they're actually very impressive. Tamio as well. So yeah. The beast of a card. There's no way to ever fall behind for for what you put into it because it's just one blue mana. It's so cheap. Um, and if I've you... been trying to get Phil to uh, to play Tamio and then also play. Um, like Wrath of the Skies and Tune the Narrative, because I think that's I, as as good as Terminus is. I think the things that he needs to fight, and in, in, if he's playing miracles, the things he needs to fight are like enchantments and artifacts, as well as the creatures. If he can, if he can sweep those away for two white mana, I think I think he's golden. So I, I think uh, you know it's it's an interesting place where control actually has a chance when you have a. Um, a wrath that's that widespread where it's like it affects more than just creatures because so much more now in the game relies on just like, Oh, I have up the beanstalk and I have all these artifacts and stuff. And you can actually just be like, it's all gone. It's the white pernicious deed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really strong exactly. card. All right, Tom. Well, uh, man, I appreciate you coming on and telling us about, uh, European legacy masters, man. Uh, Especially, you know, it's like I said, it's, you said it's coming up ne next week. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what comes out of that. Because that's one of the biggest tournaments since the ban and restricted announcement. So I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, what decks thrive uh, early on in this meta. Yeah, we, we've been lucky in the past few years because uh, we've, we've always gotten kind of a brand new meta whenever. Uh, and we, of course, yeah. plan our finals months in advance. Uh, but the first year... Our finals was like maybe three weeks after uh, the initiative cards oh, were released on MTGO. Uh, so even oh, though yeah. those decks had been legal for already quite a few months, that's when they really broke out and we had initiative win the event. Then last year, Wilds of Eldraine, we, um, the pre-release was the weekend before oh, ELM. And then, uh, yeah, and so then the winner... the Besiege and stuff, yeah. Yeah, the winner was on the Besiege deck uh, and also huge weekend for naturally up the Beanstalk. And so, yeah, this year, two, uh, we are two weeks behind the most anticipated banning uh, in years. Um, again, for, for, especially from the coverage perspective, it would have been fun to see some more changes. And I would have seen, I'd love to see agree, some of the I suggestions agree, yeah. by the community, like get rid of frog, beans, really open up the entire format. Um, now, yeah, maybe uh, maybe yeah. it's Eldrazi we'll, we'll versus frogs. We'll see what frogs. happens in December, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we'll see what happens in uh, next week at the LM, what the, our players uh, have cooked up. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, again, thanks so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one. Have a good one, everybody. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to this channel and do your part to help sustain the legacy content ecosystem. Just subscribing to this channel goes a long way to reminding YouTube that people love and support this format. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile, you should think about supporting us through Patreon. Both the links for subscription and Patreon are right here. And if you're listening on an audio format, you can go to patreon.com slash eternal Thanks so much for watching.